Hey there viewers, welcome back to part three of the RAV4. I picked us up a new head gasket set. You wanna hear the funny thing? I think I already mentioned this in another video, but they overnighted this in. Of course, it's been a couple days now. It's just been chaos. Um, anyhow, so they ordered this in and uh, the guy I ordered from, you know, didn't want to have any mistakes, so he ordered two of them, and one of them that came through had actually been opened, so <laughs> I was like, I was pretty thankful he took the time to order two of them. Uh, but when I opened this kit, so, I already sent back though, and I already credited it for me for the other one. This head gasket is still sealed in the package, so if you're getting a Felpro set, yes, it does take a black gasket, and uh, it should be sealed in the set. And what I noticed on this one, as you can see, the uh, little rivets here that they, they hook the uh, multi-layer steel gasket together with has all these little, uh, you know, like little, I guess it'd be like a hollow rivet that they, they hook to stick together. The other one that was in the box that uh, I got angry and ripped in half and sent back, that didn't have those little rivets in there. That was like a, that had like a, like a perforated crimp where they stamped it together. So it was probably a different brand or, you know, something along those lines. I don't know. All I know is we've got the right one now. We're in good shape. And uh, we're going to go ahead. It's, it's way past, but, well, it's not way past five. It's almost six. We're closed, but I've got to get this thing out of here. I feel terrible for having it for so long. And, uh, you know, it's ready to go. So at least before I go home tonight, I want to put this head on, get the headset on there, get it torqued down, and see if, uh, see if these inserts are going to hold. I hope they do. They should. I've never heard. I haven't never heard of it. I've never done one. So um, I haven't read anything on the internet, you know, or had anybody comment like, uh, you know, don't use those. They pull out. So let's get busy. Machine shop. Uh, so I got taken. Uh, I just got to pull the cams back out of it. I sent it. Uh, I've already taken it. You got to take the cams out to put the head on, and because uh, the head bolts go underneath it. Uh, but I just had the guy at the machine shop, uh, the guy I have to do all my work. Um, I just had him adjust the valves on this because this uses a. I call them shim under bucket valves, but it's got different shims that go on top of the valves that you uh, set the valve lash with. And you know, if it's at the machine shop, honestly, his hourly rate is less than mine. So it uh, is actually more economical for him to do uh, set the valve lash than it is for me. Um, you know, plus it's, it's, it's easier for them guys at the machine shop really, because a lot of them have these pucks right in stock and uh, you know, allows them to set the valve lash pretty quick. So I'm gonna get these cam jinked out of here and, and uh, I got a few things I got to put back on the head. It's been a while. I hope I remember. <laughs> I'll tell you, some days it'd be nice to just work on, uh, <laughs> you know, one make and one model, just make make things a little, a little simpler, a little easier to remember. Anyways. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of fun having all the different ones, I guess. But. And keep everything straight is, <laughs> you know, all the different makes, and models, and engine models, and the stuff can just drive you crazy trying to memorize it all, but I don't know. So, I don't. <laughs> just try to take them as they come and do the best we can. stuff in the right spot we can always move it right yeah we should be good I think we're good to go 
peek at the bottom of it. I don't want to drop any of those pucks out of there. Taking got some oil here on the bottom. We'll have to get that cleaned off, but uh, yeah, it looks like he didn't have to mill it, so that's good. I didn't have a chance to look to see what all he did. So we'll get a rag and some brake clean and get the bottom of this head cleaned off and better look up the torque spec and sequence. And I got the new head bolts. Let's see what we got. Let's skip all that. We're right to the installation. Clean parts before it's better, blah, blah, blah. Play for a show. Put a lot number up. All right, the cylinder head bolts are tightened in two steps. Uh, apply engine oil on the threads and under the heads of the cylinder head bolts. Okay, so we gotta lube the bolts. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, bi-directional wrench and sell uniformly. And torque it to 58 foot-pounds. If any one of the cylinder head bolts does not meet spec, replace the cylinder head bolt. Huh, I'm surprised they don't say replace them, period. Unless I skipped it. Anyways, we got all new ones. Okay, so there's our sequence. Uh, Retighten cylinder bolt to head 90 degrees, shown in figure 3. All right, it's all the cam. So it looks like 58 foot-pounds and then uh, 90 degrees. And that's our sequence. So I'm just going to take and uh, we're going to put that right on the block. We're just going to use a Sharpie and we'll draw that right on our head. And that way we don't have to keep looking at paper or anything. Here goes nothing. So when I was off camera, and you guys didn't see the head, I was gonna like drop a brake rotor and be like, oh, son of a, and then turn the camera off. But I think this thing has had its own drama enough, so we don't need to add any to the mix. <laughs> Get my other bag here. So we got all our new head bolts, and uh, comes with washers and its own separate little baggies. So. I'll get these put together, I'm going to throw a little lube on them and then we'll stick them down in there and get these torqued down. I think probably most of you watched the Subaru video. So it's always my habit on these torqued yield bolts is uh, I always like to use assembly lube on the, uh, on the threads and on the top and bottom of the washer. It always seems to be the slipperiest, if that's a word. And then it says to lubricate the threads too, so. All right, I'm going to do that to each bolt and then uh, Drop them down in their respective hole and cross our fingers and see if this works. Well, they're all in their holes. We'll see if we can't uh, get them all start by hand here. Sweet. Should be tight enough. All right, so we're going to go and do the uh, 58 foot-pounds. Here we go. You know, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go through and snug them up a little bit more. It's, it's quite a bit to just slam on one bolt right off right out of the gate, so.
All right, here we go. Oh man, these are gonna be tight. There's 58 on that one. Cause we still gotta go another 90 degrees. You can just feel these things twisting. Oh boy. That's number six. Boy, I don't know. We got to go another. We got to go another whole ninety degrees. That that fifty. I mean, of course, this is a pretty short wrench, but you can feel like I don't know. It's hard to explain, but you can feel that bolt. Like I wouldn't want to go any tighter than that. Let's just put it this way. But we gotta we gotta torque it down. So let me grab the other torque wrench. I see the battery's just about kicked in this one. Only got uh, only got one bar left, and I don't want it to die halfway through. Plus, I think I'm going to need a little more leverage to uh, uh, to pull, uh, you know, 90 degrees. So I grabbed my other torque wrench, but uh, I think just for uh, grins and giggles, I'm going to mark the head of these because there's such an amount of of rotational torque on that head bolt. I'm afraid that when we're pulling with the tech angle wrench, you know, it's going to measure 90 degrees. But I don't know if that bolt's actually gonna, you know, rotate back when I let off it. You know, I don't want to get all goofed up and not know where we're at, you know, as far as have they really turned 90 degrees. So I'm gonna mark a dot on each one of the head bolts facing towards the front of the engine. And essentially if we turn 90 degrees, when it's done, it should face towards the rear of the engine or the rear of the engine compartment anyway. So I think that's gonna be the wisest thing to do. Just in case you're not 100% clear what I was talking about, you can see the head bolts down in there. I put that little white dot on it. Well, when we're done, essentially that white dot should face the back. And I did it on every single one of the head bolts all the way down through there. They've all got their white dot on them. So same thing across the back. You know, we got our white dot there. So that should keep us from getting goofed up in our in our sequence here in case a wrench slips or you know, you never know what can go wrong. What do they say? Prepare for the worst and hope for the best or something like that. Let that recalibrate. Set this on 90 degrees and I don't know, I'm, I'm not feeling too good about this right now. I mean, it's really going to suck if this doesn't work. All right, here we go, we're on number one. It's 90 degrees. The little dot's facing the rear. Two out of 10.
So they're ending up all around that 80 foot pound range. Last one. Yeah, so that one is 83.7, so. Well, that's all of them. It's tight. That's a lot. It just, I don't, well, I mean, it's not really a lot. I mean, that's kind of the average torque on a, on a head bolt, you know, like, sorry about that noise. Uh, you know, like Subarus and you know, other Hondas, and, you know, a lot of torque yield bolts end up coming out like that. That just doesn't feel good. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you have to torque enough heads to know what I'm talking about or, you know, turn enough bolts. If you've ever broke a bolt, you know, when you're turning it, it feels like it's about to break. That's what they feel like the entire time. <laughs> so, I don't know. It must work that uh, the inserts we put in there are a Toyota approved, authorized insert. So, I don't know. It's tight. Well, I've had to do some thinking, and uh, I was going to bring you along on the whole trip, but I think this video initially started out a couple of videos ago, just trying to the antifreeze leak on this, and I didn't record the initial teardown on this engine, but uh, I did record the process of putting in those thread inserts from Time Cert, and well, now Torque and head back on to make sure that they work. So I think I'd mentioned to maybe a few viewers about possibly you know recording this while I put it back together and. Well, quite frankly, I'd like to, but it, it takes time. It takes a lot of time to move the camera around and, and you know, kind of fart around. And, you know, it's, it's not so much the time editing. You know, I do that after, you know, after hours, after everybody goes to sleep and, and uh, you know, kind of messing around with that. But, you know, I think I owe it to, uh, you know, to my customer to just kind of get this thing out of here in a timely fashion. So I'm going to shut the camera off and, and put this thing back together. And, and I'll definitely report back to, you know, let you guys know how it went. But... It's a, it's a time consuming job, um, you know, to do this and, and particularly having never done one of these, um, you know, I'm going to have to look up a lot of information as far as specs, you know, and set the time and chain and, and, uh, you know, torque in the cam and I'm going to go through and just, you know, verify the valve lash that we had set at the machine shop just to be sure. Um, th there's just a lot, you know, I got to silicone the, uh, you know, the time and cover back on the oil pan and, you know, I've got this thing pretty stripped down and got parts strung out. And frankly, this job has taken, you know, a lot more time than, than I think it, it should have. So in all fairness, I've got to call it quits, uh, at least, uh, you know, on your end. So, um, you know, maybe in the future, I don't plan on stopping this, uh, video production anytime soon so lord willing we'll be able to put out some more videos and who knows maybe another one of these will come through so um at any rate uh thanks for watching i'm glad to see that this uh time cert kit did work so if you're watching this video and you're wondering you know should you buy one sure why not i don't see any reason not to the kit worked good i'm pretty happy with it and i uh, don't really have any complaints it's a seems to be just an outstanding uh, company and great tooling and I couldn't think of any way to do it any better so um, yeah I guess we'll leave it at that it uh, seems to be a success I'm happy hope the customer's happy I'm starting to get a little bit of dust collecting on this thing I've got to get it out of here so anyhow reviewers just remember if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching